Hello, and uh, thanks for being here. Thanks for sticking around for the last, the graveyard session of the conference. I'm really uh, uh, delighted to see so many people here for this. Um, I'm Stephen Johnson. I have been an organizer for Teach OSM for 11 years. Um, hard to believe that uh, we started uh, this uh, effort in 2013. It was an effort between uh, myself and Nula Cowan and Richard Hinton and uh, a couple other people, uh, Mikkel Maron was in on that. Um, to, uh, we, it was 2013 and we couldn't believe that there was nobody using OpenStreetMap to teach geography. And so our motivation was to remedy that situation. Um, what is Teach OSM? We are an open resource hub and a community network primarily. Um, for both students and for teachers, both at the high school level and as well as at the college and university level. I'd like to think we uh, support a lot of vocational education, um, but um, we, have done, uh, we haven't done as much of that in, in recent years. But, but we are trying to promote not just cartographic skills and not just, uh, not just casting this in the lens of you can get a good job if you uh, are a geographer, but also casting this in terms of increasing civic engagement and actually using uh, OpenStreetMap to teach uh, spatial citizenship and uh, to uh, contribute to um, stronger institutions overall. Um, this is our governance here, is our steering committee here. Um, a lot of them are off uh, at another, at the AP Human Geography teachers reading here. But this is kind of where the, a lot of the decisions get made and a lot of the programming uh, gets initiated. Um, we also host the um, Education Working Group, which uh, meets uh, two weeks from yesterday. And uh, we do have a, if you go to meetup.com, uh, meetup.com slash teachosm, sign up, you'll get the Zoom link, and we'll, we um, happily uh, welcome you to the um, Education Working Group, which is now the main vehicle for how we are uh, working through um, working through schools to uh, promote this. We started this in 2013, I mentioned this. We um, have done a whole lot of brick and mortar trainings for teachers. We've generated a ton of uh, content. Um, a lot of it, we try to go beyond, uh, a funny story, um, when we first started doing this, we trained a bunch of teachers, I think in 2016, and taught them all about points, lines, polygons, you know, nodes and areas and way, lines and ways and things like that. And uh, they said, this is great, but we need to teach a, a unit on uh, industrialization and economic development. How do I use open mapping to do that? And we were caught flat-footed. And we had to kind of think, OK, how do we actually apply this? The, as you probably know, uh, just a cursory glance at YouTube um, reveals that the the um, how to how to map an open street map is pretty well covered, right? There's a lot that ground has been plowed many times in the last 10, 15 years about how to do that. So we've tried to move beyond just basic mapping and saying, here's how you can teach a unit in demography and population using open mapping. Um, we uh, have acquired and, and developed a whole lot of uh, curriculum and modules. You see on teachosm.org on the, under the projects, you'll see a lot of how-tos and things like that. All of it right now is in PDF format um, on there. Um, we have um, spent more time, I guess, in the past few years developing our mentorship and our kind of networks with um, teachers and trying to be receptive to their needs and, and learn more about it. And we have just recently started these professional development grants as well with that. Um, we work pretty closely with uh, our partners. I have to mention the Geotech Center in Louisville, Kentucky, who uh, works with community colleges across the nation and also the American Geographical Society, which has a huge educational component to them. They have acted as conveners for, uh, they have access to the teachers. We have access to this marvelous technology and experienced mappers such as yourselves. We uh, have had a very successful partnership for the last, I don't know, eight years with AGS to uh, put together a lot of uh, programming and develop a lot of stuff. You can hear, uh, here's in New York City, we uh, have high school teachers who are out on the streets of New York City. We're doing field mapping 
And so they're getting accustomed to a lot of the uh, methodologies that we use in that. A couple case studies here I want to present. These are just a, a few cameos from some of the teachers that we work with. Uh, Jamie Dickinson is a um, high school teacher in uh, New York State, and she uses OpenStreetMap uh, to, uh, with her students in environmental sciences to understand uh, earthquake risk. They're also mapping all of the street trees, starting with their school campus. They're mapping street trees in wooded areas uh, going out uh, in concentric, uh, concentric circles away from the campus to uh, use that to measuring uh, carbon storage in the area. So they've got a kind of an interesting project. Uh, Celeste Reynolds is one of our all-time uh, champions. She teaches in Mashpee, Massachusetts, teaches AP Human Geography. And uh, she's done a lot to uh, map, um, incorporate open mapping with the uh, migration experience and mapping refugee settlements and, um, and services that go along with it. She's also developed a relationship with the local uh, Wampanoag tribe in Mashpee, Massachusetts, and has kind of served as kind of a technical mentor to them and a lot of their students to uh, get them to uh, map the uh, tribal lands in, on the Cape Cod. Greg, uh, Greg Hill, <clears throat> another high school teacher from uh, Katy, Texas. Um, Greg's uh, whole thing is he wants to get kids doing geography. So um, actually getting out and not just being cons passive consumers, uh, use, you know, using Google Maps, but um, also contributing to the map base. So he has his, uh, he'll take his students out for field mapping and do a lot of uh, mapping campus-wise and campus-adjacent, things like that. And uh, field mapping is, is, is one of the things that he's done. So what have we learned in the last 13 years? Um, <clears throat> particularly at the high school level, teachers don't have a whole lot of latitude. Um, they frequently have to teach to the test, and if it's not on the test, it don't get taught. So um, they don't have a whole lot of uh, latitude. So um, we, uh, I'll be talking tomorrow about uh, an after-school program that we've started with AGS, American Geographical Society, to um, kind of remove, I mean, take, remove open street mapping from the classroom per se, the formal classroom instruction, and instead uh, use a kind of an after school club for that. So the mapping, it, you know, what you expect out of a mapathon needs to be scaled way down. So if, if the students only map five buildings after school, that's enough, that's good. If they're five well-formed buildings, saved with change set comments, and that is, sometimes that's enough. You have to declare victory for that. Um, it's pretty easy to train teachers to digitize buildings and to kind of align, realign roads in the carriageways. What's more difficult to teach is the things that you don't know that are going to trip up your students. Teachers are the first backstop, the first technical backstop for their students. And so they know how to do all the tracing right? The problem comes when they use the name field as a descriptor or when there's a, a road and a building that share a node. How do they unglue those things? Or uh, if the student puts in 90, you know, puts in 100 buildings but 98 of them are not squared, you know? So how, how do we help teachers, you know, with good mapping practice, best practices? So we, they need to know how to fix those common mistakes. Our tool set is only partially implemented. OSM CHA is wonderful stuff for uh, looking at change sets, exploring deep history in that. But it doesn't help Greg Hill, who's got three classes of 30 students, and he wants to group all of them, and he wants to assess all of their mapping quality and assign a grade. He can't enforce a rubric with the current OSM CHA instance. So one of our, uh, one of our initiatives is, to, it is called OSM Classroom to boost the tools and, and, uh, that are available to teachers in here. Because it's really difficult to tell a teacher, well, you start in the tasking manager and you close your task out, then you go to overpass turbo, and then you take stuff out of overpass turbo and you put it into UMAP. No, it doesn't work. You, you have to, it really has to simplify things so that um, they're not messing with code, they're not, you know, taking the output of this and feeding it into that. So it's, um, 
the, our tool set needs to be improved, and we're, we are working on that. Um, the resources are a heavy lift. We can't um, rely on the Mapathon. Um, we can't rely on transactional events like just holding a Mapathon. That just doesn't work. We have a lot of. Uh, I, I've had to dissuade teachers who um, have had one mapping training and they want to sponsor a mapathon at their school for 150 students, and I blanch at that every time I hear it because, you know, the data quality goes out the window, of course, and the students don't, you know, they do it one time and that's it. You know, it's not any kind of repeat thing. So breaking it down into smaller chunks, working with smaller groups works much better than a mapathon of 150 kids in your classroom. Lastly, educational content is hideously expensive to produce. So like a five minute video to do it right and to produce it and it's, it's really an hour or more in terms of production time. All those PDFs that we've built, you know, they take a lot of time. And of course, uh, the software changes, right? So ID gets a facelift or Jossum gets a facelift. We have to go back and we have to re, you know, update all the screenshots and everything. So um, we're trying to get away from maintaining so much content with that. Um, and to that, I want to talk a little bit about TeachOSM 2.1. Um, we want to make this more accessible to teachers and students and but we you know are cognizant of the fact that we you know we do need to instill data quality as the time that we do this and we also want to make sure that we're including all of the students in this our biggest priority for the uh, for the coming year and we're working with uh, with Quincy on uh, standing up a sandbox. Now the sandbox would be great because we can turn mappers loose in that. They can map with impunity and it's a cost-free environment. We can just toast the database at the end of the day and we can refresh it. Um, Greg Hill's uh, students, they can map the campus this semester. They could wipe it clean and map it again next semester with new students and and you know redo the same mapping lessons over and over again we don't know exactly how that's going to work but it is one of our priorities to stand up this sandbox so there's a safe place for students to map in and get used to get used to mapping for keeps before they um, go up um, extending the OSM classroom this is um, we uh, would like to in integrate uh, the Sandbox, OSM Cha, and uh, OSM Teams uh, together and have, a, I think that would probably get us 80% uh, of the way to having a complete suite of classroom uh, tools that we could hand a teacher and they wouldn't have to go from, you know, here to Overpass Turbo to UMAP to, you know, to whatever. Um, we have launched uh, about six months ago, a new online learning platform. This will um, get us out of the box of just producing PDF handouts. We have a little bit more uh, dynamic content. We can post videos, full courses, and things like this. We can also kind of um, get beyond uh, just basic open street map. Um, another thing we've launched in December was the Presidential Awards, uh, Volunteer Service Awards. So if there are students who have uh, service hours that they need to complete or want to apply for the um, President's Volunteer Service Award, they can do this through this program and, and get credit for it. So I'm real, I'm, I'm real proud of this achievement here. Um, I'm almost out of time, but I want to uh, end on a note for how uh, you can get involved. Um, our education working group is geared largely to the needs of teachers, but a lot of you are expert mappers and, and know a lot about OpenStreetMap, and it's imperative that we have your skills at the table to help inform teachers. If you uh, know a high school teacher or, or a university uh, teacher in your neighborhood, um, or someone who's, if you've got a relationship somehow with the school system that you can mentor teachers and students within that system, that's probably the single most best place for you to plug in right here and now. Share your instructional materials if you've got them. Um, if you'd like to sponsor a course or work with us to develop a course, we're happy to do that. Um, if you represent uh, the academy, if you represent a, a school or an institution, we'd love to have you as an academic member as well. 
And I think I'm out of time, so that's just this. I hope this uh, QR code still works, but uh, this should take you to that if you'd like more information. Otherwise, the fail safe down there, the info at teachosm.org. Thank you very much. <laughs>